This episode of the Best of 7 Sports Talk is sponsored by the Reflection Connection. For all your natural health care products, go to the Reflection Connection. That's connection with a K. All right, NBA fans, enjoy the show. Oh, man. As always, salute to the NBA community and welcome back to the Best of Seven Sports Talk. I'm your host, Seven Mitchell. As always, y'all know how we rocking, man. We are now wrapping up games for in the NBA playoffs. We got a lot of good games going down already on this Sunday afternoon. I'm joined by a special guest, good friend of mine, friend of the family, friend of the network. Y'all already know the vibes. We got B.A., of get your bars up media joining this man had to bring him on because he's not just a person that actually knows the game he's also played the game so it's an honor and a privilege as always ba was popping my g man uh nothing much man just in the mix i'm super duper excited about the talking points that we have today because basketball has been really really exciting this playoff oh time God. is super. Is 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 uh, then you got the you got the off the court issues as well that we can talk about as well. So oh yeah, I'm, hey, oh yeah, hey, I'm excited. I'm ready to go. It is money time in the building, man. Salute again to the NBA community. Shout out to everyone that's in the live chat as we are live streaming, man. Salute to the King Cole snack, King Cole in the building, man. As always, one of the day one. Salute my G. Big up to you. And, man, we got a lot to talk about, B.A., so I want to get started. Uh, Man, I got to talk to the bosses. We have to talk about a guy who some really proclaim to be one of the greatest coaches, if not the greatest coach in NBA history, talking about Phil Jackson. Did you hear, B.A., the comments that Phil Jackson had just recently made? I heard it. I didn't. I didn't jump out the window with it. I I didn't really feel racism, and and all of that. I didn't really feel that from that comment, the way really? he was speaking. Yeah, I did. I didn't to the fact that the NBA has become political. And then if you want to go, if you want to specifically talk about BLM specifically, that wasn't. That's not really something to really. The the actual meaning of it means a lot, but what the actual company was. And how they use the NBA to gain money and then run off with the plug like they've done. I don't <laughs> what he said, <laughs> I don't really go, I don't really, I didn't really take it as racism or him not liking people of color. I can respect that. I can respect that because I had to I had to kind of take Phil Jackson, the person outside of this actual article and statement, <laughs> because you know, we done had so much, you know history and backstories with Phil Jackson when we talk about possible racism, you know, crossing that line or walking that line finally. But, you know, I agree with you checking out what he had to say in the matter. It's it's weird, though, because, you know, let me catch people up just in case you don't know. So Phil Jackson, he basically said that Black Lives Matter slogans that the NBA had publicly embraced during the 2020 Bubble really turned him off from watching professional basketball for good. Seven, he says he, he hasn't say watched Black Lives Matter. He didn't say Black Lives Matter. He didn't say that. He didn't say that. He, he did. Say he, that. Says the, he said the BLM slogans that the NBA Bro, publicly I, embraced during the 2020 bubble. I heard the audio. Turned him off. He didn't so, say so, Black Lives Matter. He didn't say he didn't say nothing about Black Lives Matter. He's talking about logos and all of that stuff. He didn't say nothing about Black Lives Matter, which was... I don't know how that, that that was fabricated by whoever putting that out because if you actually hear the audio, he doesn't say anything about Black Lives Matter. So they continue to say that he says they even had slogans on the floor and on the baseline. It was trying to bring a certain audience to the game, and they didn't even know it was turning their people off. People want to see sports as non-political. Did he yeah. say that, that part? Yeah, he did say that uh, from the beginning to the end. Uh, have you heard the actual audio? Myself, no. I just came across this story earlier this morning. So the actual audio, I actually heard it this morning uh, after you uh, after you hit me up about coming on today. So I went to go look at the uh, listen to the actual audio. Actual audio. He said the last part that you said about the uh, the logos and everything. You talking about people having names in the back of their jerseys, all different type of names in the back of their jerseys, everything during that um, during that bubble period. And that's all he was saying was I don't like how 
uh, the the NBA just became political. So I started the whole part of it was I stopped watching NBA basketball because it became political. They started bro, bro, trying to highlight that, so many different things. BA, that don't sound crazy to you though, bro. No, I, I mean, I mean we're, we're talking crazy. about a situation with black people at the end of the day. And this was a, you know, was a, you know, it, they was that that's what it was really about when we talk about the awareness and the messages that was being brought out. So it was, it was so much aggravating that one of the greatest coaches of, in NBA history is saying that it, it took, it, it took him away from wanting to watch basketball. Really? Like all yeah. the other stuff that we've seen go down in the association over the last whatever years yeah. that made you want to not watch basketball again. He, he didn't say, but he wasn't talking about specifically. He wasn't talking about Black Lives Matter specifically. He was talking about all pol everything political with sports. People just picked out Black Lives Matter. It was like, he's talking about black people. He's a racist. Yeah, well, Scottie Pippen was right. And he wasn't. They, they, I think it was blown out of context, honestly. But I, if you. If, one thing I. One thing I realized, I, and I had to go back and do my homework real quick on the fly. You are a fan of Kobe Bryant. You are also a fan of Michael Jordan. So you are going to give Phil Jackson a bunch of passes. I should have realized and recognized that going into this actual conversation. Yeah. You feel me? But so explain this to me, B.A., because this man said that the slogans, the messages, it was trying to bring a certain audience to the game. What do you think Phil Jackson was talking about when he says a certain audience? He was black talking, people, right? No, he was not talking about black people because black people are already a part of the game and black people already watch. They already so watch what audience. What audience was what do you think Phil was referencing Black Lives Matter trying to bring to basketball? I, honestly, I think that he was talking he he was he was getting in his political bag. He was talking about more of the left wing people and more okay. of the the people that were behind that BLM were the, the um, I'm trying to figure out a way to say the alphabet, like the people of the alphabet. I don't want to say, I don't want to say like, I don't want to be super sensitive with that, but the people of the alphabet, you feel me? He was trying to, he was talking about that specifically, I believe. Is Phil Jackson a racist? I'm not going to play no games with you this afternoon here in the best of seven, man. You already know how I'm rocking. I'm just going to come out with it, man. Is Phil Jackson a racist? Uh, no, he's not a racist. Is he? Uh, is he? Um, is he stereo? Does he stereotype like most people do of all different colors, shapes, all of that? Yeah, possibly. But as far as being racist and not liking people of color, I doubt it. I doubt it. He got how too many? Much money how old. many instances or circumstances of stereotypes do you get before you as classified pretty much as a racist? I'm just asking you. I mean, if we're going to take some type of barometer and gauge, you know, try to measure oh. how many times will it take for someone to repeat this same type of stereotypical behavior for you to classify well, them as such? How long? I, how many I will tell, it take? If somebody, it does there is no many times, it would take one time. If I tell you I don't like you because of the way that you look, but the way that your skin tone is or whatnot or your ethnicity, then that is to me, that's what it is. Period. I don't like you because you're this. I haven't heard him say nothing like that, bro. When he called LeBron James and his crew to a posse, did you have a problem <laughs> with that? You, I mean, we're gonna break this down, man. This is you know, hey. this is what we do here. Did you have Yo, a problem with that? Was I mean, I mean, are they what, what would you <laughs> like? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's just the, the vocabulary. I wasn't really tripping off of it. You know what I mean? Like, when, there man, are we don't some really trip key. off of that. Clutch sports, low key is the pot. Is a, is a, is what are they? Is, is that is they're, that they're not? They're, they're crew. They're click. They are, but since Bill Jackson is Caucasian, we we don't. You can't use that word. So I get I get where everybody else was tripping with that. But if you look at it, what he really meant from it. This is he was talking about clutch sports in general. He wasn't just talking about LeBron. He was talking about clutch sports taking over and calling shots and running down there to the NBA for real. Well, you really are a Kobe fan. Like you go make sure that Phil <laughs> Jackson land on his feet in this story, man. I swear I love it. Well, I'm so not defending. What, what, <laughs> what about what about the Carmelo Anthony experience with uh Phil Jackson? Did did you feel any uh type of um racial connotations in that <laughs> relationship 
<laughs> I got more. I mean, I got more. You know, I when I'm ready to rock today, man. <laughs> Yo, a, a business relationship is a business relationship. And then okay. if we talk about that New York experience, Phil Jackson was just horrible at his job, which made, which when you are a general manager slash president, whatever he was, he was just horrible at that job and just stank it up, which it starts at the top and then it trickles down to the bottom. And yeah. that is, that is why Carmelo, that's why Carmelo was, it kind of did stain Carmelo's career, but Carmelo made that choice to go there when he could have stayed in Denver. All right. Well, you pretty much or went got... to Miami or went to Miami. All right. So you've created a safe haven for the, for Phil Jackson. In pretty <laughs> much all the situations. I mean, you've done a great job. I got one more for you, though. You know, there was a guy who won six championships under Phil Jackson's tutelage, came straight out in his book called Phil Jackson, a racist. I'm talking about the one Scotty Pippen. He flat out called Phil Jackson a racist. So that's four circumstances and examples that I've given you. You've paved the way for three of them. I don't know how, but you've paved the way for three of them. But with 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 Scotty Pippen saying it, you still think Scotty Pippen is the and then guess what? Out of all of them, Scotty Pippen is the only person out of all of them that said Phil Jackson was a racist. He's the only person. He's the only person. The other three, it wasn't none of them people that came out and say, oh, he's a racist. No. And then, once again, I'm going off of the context of what I heard from the direct source, which is okay. Scotty Pippen. Scotty Pippen actually spoke about this. Scotty Pippen has some hate in his heart. Just the same hate that he had for MJ when he was talking. go off on MJ and get out of here. Come on, stop. He ain't. Shout out to Scotty. He's one of the greatest of all time. He is to me. One of the greatest small fours to ever play the game because I got a chance to I was blessed to be able to grow up in that era and actually watch him play. But I'm not going off of Scotty Pippen's words. I'm not going off of what Scotty say. Scotty got some hate in his heart, bro. Wow. Any, He's anything not to Scotty Pittman can't win for losing. Like he can't win for losing. Like, <laughs> all right, man. It is it is unbelievable how y'all do. But I just had to get your thoughts on on, on Phil Jackson and, and and this story. Um, you said you what had you, thoughts, you actually listened to the audio. My my thoughts is um I'm with you. I don't I don't feel like this was a racist comment. He was keeping it real. You know, he was being honest, whether people like it or not. But some of the vocabulary, some of the the things I'm reading, it was kind of weird to me. Like, what audience are you talking about these slogans try to bring to the game? And why is that a problem? And yeah. and we know with the BLM, with the slogans and all the jersey names and all that was geared toward, how does that make you not want to watch basketball again? A guy whose whole life has been basketball. So that yeah. that turned you away? Forget all the drugs, the drugs, the violence, and everything that's been going down in the sport. That right there make you never want to play basketball again. And you was, you know, willing to say that in an interview in the public. It's that's weird to me, bro. I'm not gonna say he's a racist, but he just gives me too many weird vibes. And one plus one oh. equals two. So he's old, and this is what happens when you're old. When you're old, you just don't give a fuck. So if he was racist, I guarantee you. He would be like, I don't like none of y'all niggas. He would say that if he if he if he was like with with him being the age that he is. He's at the age where he doesn't give up. He doesn't care. He doesn't care. He's gonna say what he wanna say. This is the best of seven sports talk. Seven Mitchell in the building. We got the homie B A joining us, man. Salute to everybody that's in the live chat once again. B A, man. Before we get into the next topic, man, let everybody they can follow you at on social media. I know you told me you got a new sports project that you're about to start. So let everybody know what you got going on and where they can follow you, bro. So you can follow me at Get Your Bars Up Media on every single platform, Facebook, YouTube, Twitch, um, everywhere. You feel me? Um, uh, IG, all of that. Um, but shout out to Seven Mitchell, man. Shout out to my brother, Seven Mitchell. He has motivated and inspired me 
like 100 has inspired me to start up start up get your bars up sports and i actually no. uh, i have the youtube uh, uh up right now it's uh g-e-t-y-a-b-a-r-z-u-p uh sports and you can go look that up go subscribe content is coming soon but seven thank you for the inspiration sir Man, likewise, bro. Like I said, I, you are one of my day ones when it comes to this media thing. Anyway, we've had a, a rapport when it comes to a whole nother field. And, you know, just knowing that you not only know you get your stuff when we're talking about sports as a whole, you've actually played sports in your life, though. So it's always definitely a privilege just to be chopping it up with you. And, and you know, you've always been a boss and self-made when it comes to your own brand and stuff like that. So you know, it's good to see that you're jumping into the sports world, and I, and I hope that, um, you know, you get it popping. And anything that you need from me, you already know where to find me. It's a done deal, bro. You already know. Feeling, feelings mutual, bro. Thanks. You already. This is the Best of Seven Sports Talk, man. Again, man, smash that like button again. Salute to the NBA community, as always. Shout out to my guy, Anthony, in the building, man. Big up to my yes, dog, man. Dude. Make sure you guys like, comment, and subscribe to the channel. Big up to the new subscribers as well. Make sure you guys join the Best of Seven Sports Talk membership. The link is pinned to the top. Let's get into the next topic, B.A. I want to talk about my Lakers. I want to talk about my Lakers, man. Ooh. Jesus Christ. We got it done <laughs> last night. LeBron and crew up two to one. Yes. What B.A., let's start here. What have you learned about my team after three games Versus the Memphis Grizzlies. I learned that uh, they they are they are really good, and they can. They, it's a it's a chance. They have the potential to be. Uh, they have a potential to actually make it to the Western Conference Finals. They have that potential, um, and man. The role players, as long as the role players continue to do what they do. If they focus more on defense opposed to offense, because offense is gonna come because they have so many gifted offensive players. If they right. focus and lock down on defense, they will they'll be a one. But when they get to what they did, because they was up by 30 points yesterday, and they let them boys kind of make a little run back for whatever apparent reason because they let the get foot off the gas. The same thing they did in game two. They can't do that. They got they gotta keep the foot on the gas and defend. But I like them though. I like the Lakers. Yeah, John Morant went crazy, you know, yesterday. He definitely tried to help spare some type of comeback. It just wasn't enough. And we have watched the Lakers play down to the level of competition pretty much all season. And they've always had a problem with holding leads. So you're absolutely right. That's something that they need to focus on. We're going to talk about Memphis in a second. But you brought up the Lakers role players and how they had stepped up, being pretty impressive. You know, LeBron doesn't have to lead this team if these guys play well lebron yeah. doesn't have to lead this team in my opinion but can he still in in your in your eyes if they really need lebron to like take the driver's seat for not just one game maybe a series do you think lebron james still has enough in the tank to get it get it done uh no I I, uh, I think his age um, has caught up with him. And I noticed that I, I've been noticing um, what I've noticed this season is, don't get me wrong, he's still average. He, he still averaged 30 points a game. But I noticed that like at key moments in games when they need somebody to actually go super crazy, I noticed that he doesn't have that extra gear that he, he, he used to be able to get to to actually uh, affect the whole game. Because he used to like LeBron used to be, he used to be able to influence the entire game. I'm talking about offensive, defensively, etc. Like, have you super scared to do that? Like, I don't know. He just like he could shut down a whole arena and control a whole arena. He doesn't have that anymore. Now, with him specifically, the Lakers don't really go where he goes because he's gonna get what he gets because that's what he does. He, you know, he he passed them stats up, he can score. But Anthony, Anthony Davis, they're going the, – the Lakers are only going to go as far as Anthony Davis takes them. And that's who ha, that's who the team really relies on to me this season. That's who they're going to have to rely on. 
you know, B.A., respectfully. <laughs> you... <laughs> Let me tell you something. I know it's coming. I know it's coming. You have really disrespected LeBron James for the last time on my show. You know, I have allowed this thing to go down for months. And Bro. for you to sit up here with the American public listening in and say that LeBron James is too old. Bro, he doesn't this have is that a guy gear. who we did we not just witness this man surpass Kareem Abdul ball time this same season that we currently yeah. in? You forgot. But he, he's been in the league for 20 years. You seven. I don't know. I think it's the I think it's those glasses, those shades you got on. If you take those shades off when you watch LeBron and why when you watch LeBron play, you can tell he doesn't move the same. He be getting this shit swatted. A lot of his buckets come in garbage time. My they come God. in garbage modes. My God, this is so disrespectful. <laughs> He's not doing that. He still you're gonna sit up here of all time, bro. He's still like, just like top three all the time. Top three. LeBron still, James is the greatest of all, all time. time you putting Kobe and Michael Jordan over LeBron is blasphemy. Yes. I don't even want to go yes. down that road. This is insane, B.A. It's, You're it's making all, it seem like LeBron no. offensively have fell off. No, I'm saying like he is not what he 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 is not. He doesn't control the game like he used to. He gets buckets, but he gets buckets like his buckets don't really. Most games this season, his buckets didn't contribute to, to wins. They didn't. I'm not going to let didn't. you get away with that, B.A. He has the greatest basketball IQ in the league. How are you going to say he doesn't impact the game anymore? If you want to say all time, all time, I'm talking about today. I'm not talking about five years ago and beyond or four who's, years ago. Who's smarter than LeBron on the basketball court right now? Bro, Kobe is the GOAT. That's all <laughs> I can say. Kobe is the GOAT. Salute to LeBron. But Kobe is the GOAT. I'm sorry, Seven. Shout out to oh, LeBron. God. Bro, it's been thousands of why so seven. Tell me this. It's been thousands of NBA players, right? Thousands, right? That's ever played, that's ever been able, well, not thousands, but a, a few, few thousand that's ever put on an NBA uniform and played in the NBA game. What's wrong with being number three? What's wrong with being top three, bro? That's incredible. That's incredible. You should be asking yourself that because the guy that you campaigning for, Kobe, at the best, is number yes. three. I mean, you got to put Kobe above Magic and Larry Bird, and you can have that argument. Yeah, My man, hey, LeBron, is number one if above Kobe I'll, and Jordan. You watch see, how he played versus Kobe, bro. bro. How can you even compare? Come on, man. Like This is what I'm going to say, Sander. This is what Salute I'm to the say. new member, man. Anthony, appreciate you, dog. You already this know, man. Good. Make sure you guys join the membership. We got exclusive content for all members. We got free perks, prizes, and giveaways. We got a lot going on for our new members. So make sure you guys join the membership here at the Best of Seven Sports Talk. Definitely appreciate that. Again, once again, Anth, uh, I apologize for cutting you off, uh, BA. Uh, no, no, you good. Hey, shout out to Ed, the new member. New members, please support, support. Hit that like button. Share this thing 100%. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, but uh, it's okay. Like, if, you, if anybody that says Kobe – or MJ is in that top three, even if you do got LeBron as number one. I can't knock it to each his own. Tomatoes, tomatoes to me, whatever. But it's when you start talking about top 10, top 15, that's when I that's when I trust. But he can be three. You can say three. I mean, he not, he not, he not number one or number two to me, but he's still number three. That's still pretty big time, bro. I can't. He's big time, bro. I, I really got to talk to the bosses about you, y'all. I, I mean, it, 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 it. Okay, well, let, let's go here. The Memphis Grizzlies, you know, we had the situation where John Moran here got hurt. You know what I mean? We just talked about his performance uh, yesterday. Um, Dylan Brooks, big topic of discussion. Yeah. With his mouth and his comments versus LeBron James, he got ejected yesterday. He really didn't have that much of an impact in yesterday's game. Memphis is now down two to one. Home court advantage got stolen from him in game one with the loss. W where do you see Memphis going at from here? Like, how do you see Memphis being able to bounce back? Do you see Memphis being able to bounce back? It's it's Memphis is tricky to me with Memphis. 
they are they they have been the last couple seasons they've been a really really good organization a really good team specifically but when John ja Morant with John ja Morant in and out the lineup I feel like it, it it messes up the camaraderie of the squad because if you notice when John ja Morant is not playing right they actually play very well as a unit when John ja Morant is inserted into the lineup after missing however many games or one or two games that uh they all say okay uh let, let's depend on Ja. Ja is gonna lead the way and everybody step back and they just stop and they just watch him play and watch him do unbelievable things and i think that that's an issue that they have they're gonna have to he had 13 assists and he had 45 points i believe 13 and 45 eight rebounds something crazy that means that the ball is sticking to his hands and it's not moving like it's supposed to be moving because so we're when blaming Jabba broke. Rant for the loss. We're blaming Jabba Rant for Memphis's uh, struggles. And you're saying that they are better yeah. off with Jabba Rant. Is that what this boils down to, B.A.? I'm saying that they're going to have to figure out a way how to get everybody, like everybody's going to have to be involved offensively opposed to just John Morant. John Morant did his thing, and he's an amazing player. But if you notice, when he does not play, everybody on the team, the ball moves with energy everywhere. When he gets there, the ball tends to stick. And there's nothing wrong with it because he's a superstar. But this is why they have an amazing record when he doesn't play. I just feel like that's cat. You're right. In the regular season, we've seen Memphis be successful without Ja Morant. They've won games. But we're talking about the postseason. Seven-game series. This whole thing slows down. It becomes more of a half-court game. I'm not sold that that supporting cast of Memphis can beat a powerhouse Western Conference team four out of seven times without Ja Morant, especially when you got somebody like Dylan Brooks who's more bark than bite. Where are your production going to come from? Yeah, it looks good. Team basketball, it does look good when these one-on-one isolated types of games and situations, but when your opponent now gets to study you and you got to play them possibly seven times, you're going to need a hero for the most part. Like Championship teams are not really one without you know somebody being that guy like when have we ever really seen that happen i think i agree but not against the lakers they don't need job like they the memphis doesn't need john Morant to beat the lakers they don't what they don't really yeah they don't they play completely different without them <laughs> they that play is they make, hey, and then they make and then like when they play without him and they spread the court without john because john oh he likes to penetrate a lot and try to get to the middle Anthony Anthony Davis does not live in the paint when John ja, when John ja Moran is not playing. He's he's always coming to extend out. When John ja Moran is playing, because you were anticipating that uh penetration, he's standing in the middle, blocking it and block, like clogging up everything. So I, I think my man ate decent up. props for, for his defensive presence. He's been shout he's out. been swatting shit all playoffs. Shout out to shout out to AD, but I wouldn't be bro. I hold my breath every time. I hold my breath every time he falls down on the ground. I hold my breath. I be like, <gasps> yeah. Ah. Then he gets yeah. he gets it's ridiculous. <laughs> it is he, really y'all ridiculous. Gonna to, y'all gonna have to move that man. Y'all are gonna have to move that man pretty soon. I don't think uh, this is the last season y'all should even have him. <laughs> and seven, I gotta ask you this one specific thing before we switch. What are your thoughts about Dylan Brooks getting? Uh, ejected with a flagrant too. I mean, first of all, it that's the rule. It was a it was a groin shot. It was intentional. You think it was intentional? How, ah, yeah, come yeah, on, was, man. bro. No Dylan, Dylan Brooks, no bro. This is this is the this is a gift and the curse of being a trash talker. Like when you put your when you put yourself in the spotlight, it's all eyes on you mean something. Like that was just perfectly defined right there. Everybody know that Dylan Brooks was gonna be under a microscope. LeBron James even confronted, had some words for him before the game started. So you can't tell me that was a what you saying that was a mistake. Yeah, that was definitely an accident. He didn't he didn't hit him on it. If you know basketball, you know you shipped, right? This is what happened. LeBron. LeBron made a good ass move behind the back. He anticipated. He had the ball in his left hand. 
He's faking one way. He went, uh, Dylan Brooks tried to reach in because he thought he anticipated LeBron to actually go one way. He was going to cut him off. But when LeBron shifted on him and, and went behind that back to that right hand, he had already sold out and committed himself to making that steal or to even fouling him that way. Not fouling him, but to, to, to try to get ahead and get in front of him. And that's what happened. It should have been a flagrant one. A flagrant two, though, they saying it's excessive and he really tried to hurt. Nah, that nigga didn't try to hit. Man, get out of here. Because Come it was on. to the groin. Ain't no any any, know this. any groin shots is going to get you a flagrant two, right? Bro, bro, that was a flagrant one. It was incidental. It was not. I think he in the rule book, there was automatically a flagrant two if it's a groin shot, right? Because James Harden just got ejected for the same thing, right? They try to be consistent. I didn't. I didn't watch the James Harden one, but I guess they tried to be ah, consistent. But I think wow. because he's Dylan Brooks, they're in LA, and it's LeBron and this is James. The thing, and Snack King Cole just said it. Like you sitting up here capping for Dylan Brooks, talking about defensively, he was trying to attempt to get the steal. That's what what he, the hell is yeah. Dylan Brooks? When he ain't getting no steal from LeBron, what are you talking about? Like, come on, Bro. BA. Like, really? Bro. This, but this, but this is if you know basketball, you see you you're looking at the play. LeBron goes one way, right? And then Dylan Brooks tries to he tries to anticipate where LeBron's gonna go. And LeBron says, Nope, shift up behind the back. I'm gonna switch the other way. And Dylan Brooks at that time of that shift, he's reaching in. LeBron fucking altered his whole body by going behind the back, and he reached. He reached. He wasn't trying to punch that nigga. No, nah, we ain't doing that, man. Come on. He know this, man. He know this, man. How will this series play out to you? LA is now up two games to one. Game four is um, in LA. How do you think the rest of the series is going to play out, in your opinion? Original, originally, I had um, I had Memphis I had Memphis in six originally. Um, I'm, I might have to change it. I think uh, I think LA is going to win in six games, and I and like I said, I do that. I say that because they are. Um, I don't know what's going to happen with John Morant. Are they going to? Is he going to hurt his hand again? And then they're going to take him out one. He's going to have to sit out one game and then come back, and then everything is all discombobulated. It, I don't know. There's a, it's a it's a huge question mark with Memphis. So I'm going to say LA in six. LA and six. Okay, cool. Wow, wow, wow. Hey, you didn't have no rebuttal for that, huh? You were like, yeah, yeah. No, because, yeah. you know, when you first, at the beginning of this conversation, you said that the Lakers was a dangerous team. So that yeah. alone was good enough. But, I, you know, you had a lot of disrespect for LeBron. I'm I'm getting over that gradually. Uh, but you got the Lakers winning this series. I mean, however you want to spin it is definitely good enough to me. I do want to stay in L.A. I want to come back to L.A., but uh, let's go to New York, man. I just watched the New York Knicks get a big win in Madison Square Garden versus the Cleveland Cavaliers. The Knicks are now up 3-1, to one, um, looking to win a playoff series for the first time, I believe, in over 15 years. Yeah. Um, man, the Knicks are the real deal, bro. I, I, I'm just watching – how much heart some of those guys got. Those guys are balling. Josh Hart, he was balling. Um, you know, uh, what's his name from Duke? Um, RJ Barrett. RJ RJ Barrett, he's playing solid. Julius Randle's doing what he normally do, but Jalen Mother freaking Brunson. Jalen Brunson, bro, is on another level, but I, I just wanted to say that, uh, you know, R.J. Barrett, he had the biggest playoff game of his career today. Yeah. And, you know, for the most part, um, the guy you just mentioned. Um, oh, Jalen Brunson? Or not Jalen. Uh, oh, man, his name. Oh, Mitchell, man. Mitchell, Mitchell Robinson? Not, not, no, 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 no. You just mentioned his RJ. name. She not not R.J. Um, the, oh uh, man, I can't believe Julius, I forgot Julius, it. Julius Randle. Julius, Julius Randle. Wow. Yeah. Ugly. Jesus Christ. He, they, you know, he sat out pretty much the, the majority of the fourth quarter. Like the Knicks had so much of a rhythm with the guys on the bench. He sat out on the fourth quarter and he didn't pat get or powder give an attitude about it. Like it was a real good look for the yeah. Knicks culture, bro. Uh, but Jalen Brunson, man, you brought him up. What is your thoughts on Jalen Brunson and what he's meant to this organization in New York? 
New York, you have just found you a cornerstone. Don't get rid of him. Mm. Not get rid of this young man. He's one. He's that on dude, huh? Level, yes. We talking about a guy that helped. Like everybody talked about the Dallas Mavericks and everything uh, last season, right? And they kept talking about Luca this, Luca that. Yo, Luca missed. I think he missed like three or four games, and they only lost one game. One game. When Luca was gone, because of why? Because Jalen Brunson is that guy. He doesn't. It's not that he can score, that he can pass, that he's just this. He's just, bro. He's a leader, and he brings a calm factor to the whole team, and that says a lot. Like that's that's you can't go buy that on a shelf. You can't just go to free agency and just pick some, pick somebody up that can do that. Not too many people. It's probably ten percent of the NBA can do the things that he can do for an organization and actually have an impact. I definitely got to give Jalen Brunson a round of applause. Man. Really you know, I was one of those guys in the offseason. I was one of those guys in the offseason that felt like New York was crazy for giving this guy a hundred and something million dollar contract. Because unlike you, I wasn't sold off of what I just witnessed in Dallas. Like, I didn't follow Jalen Brunson's career. I know him and Luka went to the Western Conference Finals, but I was looking at it like this was just an isolated situation. Who is this guy? You know, I thought they should have invested more money in trying to get Donovan Mitchell. So when they spent like the 100, 120 million on Jalen, I thought the Knicks had made a mistake. And boy, was I wrong, bro. Like, everything you said Jalen Brunson is, he he's that plus one, bro. He has just been, he's official, bro. He's Seven. official. Did you know he was National College Basketball Player of the Year? Did you know that? No, no. Yeah, exactly. I never, you know, I never knew nothing about this kid. Do you know that he has two NCAA championships with Villanova? Two. Talk to him. Talk to me. Talk to me. Bro, <laughs> the knock on him was, oh, we don't know how his game's gonna translate to the NBA, and that he's uh, uh and, and that he's he's too he might be too small to be uh to be a point guard that's gonna be he's not quick enough and efficient enough. But no, that's the thing about him. He doesn't play. He doesn't need athleticism to play the game. He plays the game up here, and that's what makes him special. Is he better than Julius Randle? Is he the best player on the Knicks team? Yes. Yes, hands okay. down. I like Julius Randle as the. Now, Julius is the second best. I like what he does, but when it comes down to the game and to and to and to actually uh, down the stretch, we're gonna we're gonna look we're gonna go to uh, Brunson opposed to Randall. Randall, I'm saying we. I'm not no Knicks fan for real, but just watching them throughout the season, Julius Randall can hold it down, and, and he's gonna be 2010 automatically because that's what he is. He's he's like Zach Randolph 2.0 to me, but Jalen Brunson is the guy. So Jalen Brunson is the king of New York. I mean, between the Brooklyn Nets and the New York Knicks, is Jalen Brunson the best guy that the state of New York has in professional basketball? Is he the king of New York right now? Yeah, once uh, once KD and Kyrie got up out of there, yeah. Well, I got some bad news for you because Jalen Brunson ain't he ain't he ain't good enough to bring you no Larry O'Brien trophy now. Like, let's let's slow our roll. Don't he be might surprised. be the king of New York, but what? Don't be surprised. You don't think he's gonna need some help? Don't be surprised if the Knicks make it to the Eastern Conference Finals. Don't be surprised. You heard it here first. Don't be surprised, especially, especially if the Bucks don't. <laughs> yo, oh my especially god! If the Bucks don't make, hey, especially if the Bucks fold to the Miami Heat. Oh, don't be goodness. surprised, bro. <laughs> yo. Just saying. I'm going to save the Miami Heat conversation for another day, but they are up <laughs> two to one on Milwaukee. Yes. Yes. A team that lost the first play in game have found yes. a way to be up on the number one seeded team, and Giannis is not healthy. That's the nest, and that's that part right there. It's that part. And then they got the next game is in Miami. Game four is in Miami. So it's a big chance they can go down. 
after tomorrow. Wow, bro. <laughs> it sounds crazy, but this is what it is. Yeah. Yikes. So, again, getting back to Jalen Brunson, man, I am very impressed, bro. But big picture wise, bro, he is not going to be enough for New York Knicks to win a title. I mean, I hear you saying Eastern Conference appearances and all that, but, you know, we talking championships. We talking, you know, the the, the top of the hill. Bro, I think he's going to need another star or a superstar to come help him. He bro. ain't good enough for just that, but the I think they're setting a good standard. The way that the New York Knicks look, they could win a championship this year. They could, bro. I'm what? not saying that they are. I don't think that they are, but I wouldn't be surprised if they made it to the Eastern Conference Finals and then made it to the final. Like, bro, they are good enough for that this year. They're good enough for that this year from top to bottom, from top to bottom with great coaching. And then they got, bro, they got a squad. They always, they, they've been good, but one player just made a difference. And then quickly was in the running for six man of the year. I believe he came in number yeah, two. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then you got, and then Mitchell Robinson was one of the top defenders when Mitchell he, Robinson he was hurt stepping major, it up. He was ma- hurt majority of the season, and he didn't come back to like the later ends of the season. And now he's holding down the paint. Come on, man! I'm telling you, this is different. And I'm not a Knicks fan at all, but I'm not naive to see that they have a chance at doing some big things this year. Sometimes, and I hate to say this, but losing can be good for some teams. I'm thinking that New York has set themselves in a good position, in a good space, where as though they would have a star or possibly a superstar being attracted to come over there and play with Jalen Brunson and really make a real run for a title. Um, If they was to come up short in maybe this round or the next round, do you think that the Knicks losing at this point is bad for, you know, their potential, or are they in a win-win situation no matter what? In order for them to be successful, to be a successful season, they have to win this round. If they lose to Cleveland, if Cleveland somehow turns up and ends up winning this series, this whole season was a failure. They have to make it to the second round at least, minimally. They go to the second round and lose to Miami or Milwaukee, then it's different. It's the, uh, then then it's like, all right, yo, we got something to build off of. Look at the potential. We haven't made it, and we haven't won a round. We haven't won a first round series in over fifteen years, right? And we got now we got Jalen Brunson's first season here. He's changing the whole culture of how everything is. Players are getting better. We might get rid of R.J. Barrett. We might keep him. Whatever they're gonna do, but. They have to win. They have to win this series. What about I'm about to change topics? I want to talk real quick, real brief about Ime Udoka because his name has come up a lot in conversations for head coaching jobs. I heard the Houston Rockets are going to be interviewing him along with Frank Vogel. Um, Ime's name just came up in conversations with Toronto. Now that Nick Nurse and the Raptors have parted ways. What's your thoughts on Ime Udoka? Where do you think he's going to land BA if he comes back? Are you surprised he's getting an opportunity to come back? And did Boston make a mistake letting him go in the first place? Three part question. Yeah, I don't, I don't, I think Boston, Boston, I, I think they made a mistake. But at the same time, the coach that is coaching right now for them. Is uh is under the tutelage. He came from, he came from yeah. Ime Udoka. Yeah, Frank Coach Frank yeah. Mazula did come from under yeah. that umbrella of Ime. Correct. Exactly. They, the whole coach, actually the whole staff that's still there with uh, Damon Stoudemire and all of them. They came from, uh, they it came from Ime. But with that being said, uh, Ime, I don't know. I don't know. I'm trying to figure out where he, cause he can go anywhere. He can go anywhere. He's a really good coach in general. So he about to if go. If you was him, to- if you was him, and the two choices was the Rockets and the Raptors, hypothetically, which which organization you think is probably a better fit for Eme? His presence, the Raptors right now, 
or the Rockets right now? Because I like Houston with these young guys. Yeah. I just don't know how much of an influence he would be. I'm going to Houston. I'm going, going to, to Houston. Houston? Okay. Yeah. Besides the no state income tax, besides that part, <laughs> um, him going to Houston with the young players that they got, and plus they're about to get multiple uh, first round draft picks as well. I, I, I'm I'm up on them, and I think that he's going to help them defensively because them young boys can score. They just can't play a lick of defense. Word. This is the best of seven sports talk, guys. Seven Mitchell and B.A. We are in the building, man, giving you guys some of that great NBA sports content. Make sure y'all follow us on social media. One last topic before we get out of here this afternoon. I want to go back to L.A. I want to talk about the Clippers now, B.A. I want to talk about first Kawhi Leonard. Kawhi Leonard gets hurt again. I saw Stephen A. Smith saying that he feel like Kawhi Leonard should actually retire from the game of basketball. They're now going at it with the Phoenix Suns in the first round. Uh, They have no Paul George. He's now doing a podcast. Kawhi Leonard is now out. The Clippers are pretty much forced with Russell being the number one. Russell's played pretty well, but it just hasn't been enough to get um, through the Phoenix Suns as of yet. What's your thoughts on Kawhi Leonard, bro? First of all. Shout out to Kawhi. He got his money. Got his contract. But he just don't do it for me. And he he is another one of these players that just it's like he finesses it's like it's like he takes I don't know maybe his knee might be hurt but it's just everything always happens at uh, the un uh, the unopportune times time. yeah. So, yeah like bro he does you score thirty two you score thirty eight thirty two and then your knee starts hurting so you can't play the next game that your team needs you. You see a team out there struggling. Like with Paul George, when he gets injured, we see Paul George injuries. Because usually his injuries are on the court and he can't go. And when he can't, and usually when he is hurt and he can go, Paul George is going to play. Kawhi Leonard just is really like, like, yo, I'm good. I'm straight. I'm straight. And you see him walking all normal, laughing at everybody on the bench, talking about, yeah, come on, guys, trying to. Nah, man. Yeah. (laughs) Nah, Kawhi. I'm just I don't like I'm not liking Kawhi right now, but get your money, young man. Get your money. I did a video I dropped yesterday on Paul George doing a podcast. And you know, I kind of have a I don't I don't have a problem with these guys jumping outside of their bag, doing other things, you know, for their brand and stuff. But just looking at the history of NBA players who have been doing this podcasting thing, the yeah. team's success at the time doesn't usually coins exist with each other. You look at Draymond's season this year and how Golden State struggled on the road. And you look at Patrick Beverly and you look at now, uh, I mean, you look at Danny Green who had a podcast and, and and now you got Paul George who started a podcast. Like, what's your thoughts on the NBA players doing these podcasts? Do you think it's really taken away from team success or do you just don't have a problem with it? I don't have a problem with it. I, I like it. I like hearing that perspective. Um, okay. Uh, the only thing I'm not gonna lie with with, with Draymond Green, it was a little different though. Draymond Green was a little different because he all he he starts so much controversy and he says so much craziness, like on and off the court, that it's like he can he can really he's the type of player he can really take all of the the momentum from your your team, the eyes that's supposed to be on your team, and put it on himself and put pressure on him uh, on the team as well. But uh, Paul George, no, he's not. Paul George is out there being friendly, talking about moments, past moments, the NBA experience. He's not out there literally talking about, yeah, so this is what I was thinking when I hit somebody in the in the crown jewels. Or this is what it, like, or this is this is why I punched someone so at practice in the mouth. He's not out there talking like that. <laughs> but I mean, when you look at it though, BA, like bottom line wise, these guys who make in podcasts, their teams don't win. You know, and, and there's not a lot. I mean, when you just look at it for what it is, like these guys, Draymond did, they won the championship last year. I think his uh, podcast kind of kicked off like in during the NBA final. So it worked at that moment. But overall this season, it didn't work. Patrick Beverly, 
I mean, we see how his year went. Now Paul George, I mean, they struggling, and now we seeing him. He on every podcast talking about I'm I'm close to coming back and all that. And I'm just like, bro, don't nobody need to hear you talk. And talk is cheap at this point if you're a Clippers fan because the expectation level since 2019 was so high for you and Kawhi Leonard. You guys never met expectations. So the last thing people will want to hear right now is you talking on a podcast. Get your butt out there on the court and help. Because, you know, it's just like it's now or never for real for the Clippers, bro. Bro, it was over. Let me tell you when it was over for the Clippers. So it was over for the Clippers in the bubble when they when, when Kawhi, and them, Kawhi and Paul George like, I don't want to play basketball no more. Then they forced him to come back uh, to, to play because they said, we're not going to pay you unless you come to the bubble. They went right. back to the bubble to play, and they messed around with Denver. Denver. And blew a 3-1 lead. And by far, they had the best team in the whole entire bubble, by far. And they let Denver beat them. They have not been the same since. Clippers was not better than LeBron and AD in the Lakers. Oh, Don't at you that stop time, that, B.A., why do you hate? The Lakers won the championship, bro. When I'm saying show some time, respect? Bro, they played against the Denver Nuggets, the baby Nuggets. We not doing that. Come on, man. The Lakers we who, played the we didn't Clippers. Even know who Jokic was. We didn't even know who Jokic was. The Lakers played the Clippers the that. first game back from the pandemic and cleaned them yeah. up. Yeah, that, of course they didn't want to be there. That's not the Lakers' fault. Don't. I'm not. I, listen, <laughs> I, I don't. You're not going to. You're not going to shit on my success because these okay. niggas didn't want to be there. Like that's 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 this is the job. What do you mean All you right. don't want to be here? This is the job. All right, I forgot. I forgot that. Um, I keep forgetting that uh, LeBron James is a Laker, and if LeBron James left when when he leaves, not if, but when he leaves the Lakers, Seven's not gonna have Lakers stuff up no more. Yeah, I'm taking this down. <laughs> Once LeBron leaves, I'm taking all this down. Don't worry. Somebody in the chat said I need to turn this to a Lakers show. It's yeah. only temporary. Trust and believe. Yeah. Me. When LeBron go, I go. Yeah, well, That's just how we rock it, man. Temporary. I gotta but, get up out of here. But um. <laughs> With the Clippers, though, uh, how do you see this thing ending now? You know, they down to the Phoenix Suns. How you, do you think they done? No chance. They get they they showed me that they can they actually they can win one more game. They showed me they can win one more game without Kawhi. Um, they can win one more possibly, but I there's too much down the stretch, bro. Like. Without a go to, without the number, without a real go to score, they can't like down the stretch. They, they, nah, bro. I, Phoenix got it. In, and I, what I tell you, Phoenix not that good. I keep, I told you, Phoenix is not as good as you thought they were. Yeah, you said that. You definitely said that. You Why? Because they, they got the Clippers together. number. They haven't played together. And if, if Paul George and Kawhi is on that floor, <laughs> it's a but different they ain't. Series. They but not. they ain't. They not. Yeah, they not. They not. And Kawhi, get your bag, Kawhi. That's all I can say. Get your bag, sir. <laughs> Russell Westbrook, what's your thoughts on him? What does his future look like to you? I can see him coming back. I can see the uh, Clippers re-signing him. I can see the really? Clippers re-signing him. Yeah. Like, what he's done since he's been there in this short sample size has been incredible. He's been playing. Like, he hasn't been able to shoot the ball extremely well, but he's never really been a shooter. But as far as impact, he's been impacting the game more in a good way than a bad get, a bad way since he's been in L.A. I mean, since he's been a Clipper. All right, man, you heard it first. My guy B.A. says he feel like the, the, the Clippers are will re-sign. Russell Westbrook will remain to be seen. B.A., I appreciate you joining me this afternoon, bro. Hey, appreciate you for having me, man. Yo, I love... Talking this sports ish with this Lakers fan over here. Well, no, with this LeBron fan over here. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> Y'all already know, man. We got to identify ourselves, man. King James, yeah. salute. Big up to the NBA community. Shout out to everyone out there in the live chat. Once again, this is the best of seven sports talk. I'm your host, Seven Mitchell. If you guys are new to this platform, make sure that you like, comment, and subscribe. Once again, more importantly, if you guys are into daily NBA content, make sure you follow me everywhere on social media. Definitely appreciate all your support. Guys, make sure y'all stay safe this week. Definitely uh, look forward 
to another uh, opportunity to chop it up with you guys. Big up again to my dog, B.A. from Get Your Bars Up Media. I'll put the link of his new sports channel in the description of the podcast so you guys can catch up and stay in the loop with what he got on. Big up again to everyone, all the supporters. Shout out again to my dog, Anthony. Appreciate you for becoming a member today. All you guys, once again, become a member of the Best of Seven Sports Talk. Definitely appreciate your guys' support. Y'all stay safe. And I will be back live with you guys tomorrow night. We got Trey from the uh, First Formation uh, Sports Talk podcast. He's going to be joining me tomorrow night here at the Best of Seven Sports Talk. So 9 o'clock p.m. Eastern, we back at it again tomorrow talking more of the NBA playoffs and whatever happened the rest of this evening. So y'all stay safe and I'll catch you guys tomorrow here at the best of seven sports talk. Salute you guys. I'm out. Peace. All right, man. I want to thank you guys for listening into another episode of the best of seven sports talk. I'm seven Mitchell, man. Make sure you follow the show to be sure to be notified about the next episode. Also, I'll put the link tree link in the description so you can follow us on social media as well as donate and contribute to our platform. See you guys again on the next episode. Peace.